so I have a special mental block against GIS software. <laughs> I think it's because I've used Arc and QGIS and I don't use either of them often enough that then I can mix them up in my brains. And so this video is for myself of how to extract different shapefiles from a larger shapefile. So this is the shapefile for South Africa over here. So I always land up going to it, I right click and I go attribute tables and then I can never ever figure out where to go from here. And so I just wanted to show you here um, why this is important. So if I'm sure I could do this a different way, but if I go here to column preview, it shows all of the information that is in each of these shape files. And so here you could see for one area, I'm just trying to let me make it a bit more useful. Is that there? No. Never mind. Okay, so you can see on the left hand side here, these are all the different stratigraphic units contained in this larger shape file. And so if I click on one of them here, um, this is information about this specific polygon here. So the perimeter distance, the area of it. But the thing I really care about is the strat name. So it's Karoo Supergroup. It's also useful as telling me from the Jurassic and what type of rock it, rocks it is. So maybe I want to come along and say, well, I want to extract all Karoo Supergroup polygons and save them together by themselves. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, and I think I figured out how to do it. Is this it? Oh, okay, so I can do it this way. I'll show you the other way I also figured out. Okay, so let me remind you what I did. I came here to the shape file. I right-clicked on it, and I went to Open Attribute Table. And let's hope this works. And so I'm going up top here to this little, uh, I forget what Greek letter that is, but it's called Select Features Using an Expression. And I click on it. And this window comes up. You can see here it says Select by Expression. So I'm now myself going to go to Fields and Values. And I want to use the strat name, so the stratigraphic unit's name, to extract just certain units. So I double click on it. You can see it adds it up here. I click equals. And now I need to find the unit I want to extract. So I go here and I click all unique. This gives me all the names of the different stratigraphic units. You can scroll through it or you can type here. So I'm actually looking for the Lord Bower Granite Street. I double click on it and you can see it's added it up here and I go select feature. And I'm sure you could drag this down if you wanted. And if I zoom out, we should see that here is the Labora Granite Suite selected. And now if I want to export that, I go right click, export, save selected features as. Um, let me just see where I'm saving it. Reminder to just try and always put your shape files in the same place. You can see under my GSF folder, I've got a shape files, shape files, and then I put it all in here. And I try and write polygon before, because sometimes you also export faults, and those are uh, linear features. Polygon, and I said Labora. Oh, I've already got it. Oh, that's very funny. Um, but you would click on, uh, you would write up the name. Uh, you might not have to add the extension here. We'll probably add it for you. And if you click on Save, um, you come back to this window, and you can see here you're exporting it, undoing it as an ESRI shapefile. You might want to go through and look at what the other options are, but this is often what is the most useful. And then I just click OK. It says uh, it already exists. That's fine. I'm going to overwrite it. And the nice thing is it then adds it in for you as well. So if I take this away, this is what I've got. And so that is fine. So I want to now put this into Geosoft. Um, you can see this is not part of the instructions, but just so you can see, I want to see this is a gravity anomaly over the south of the bushveld complex. I want to see what of these rocks are due to the bushveld. So I'm going to go to Map, Import, Shape Files. You're welcome to tell me if there's a quicker way to do all of this. Uh, I've got to find out where I saved it. Um, there we are, and let's hope it works. So here I'm saying don't import it as a database as well. Just put it on my map. Oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, oh it's probably because it's not filled in. Okay, so I had the whole of the geology shape files loaded. As soon as I take that off, I can now just see the little ball of granite. So I was quite interested to see if they coincide with any of the gravity lows. I'm quite confused about this gravity low, if it is because of the granites or if it's because of deeper moho changes. So I can fill it in. I'm going to go right click on this here, edit vector group, go to the screen that's uh, where it's highlighted, go right click, select all, right click, line attributes. And I just want to fill this in with a solid fill. 
add it washed really you can choose your color okay so interesting i mean the fact that you've got two of them right next to each other and that they're going across a blue a green and a green and orange anomalies makes me think that that's not linked completely to the granites um okay so that's how you export the individual shape files i'm going to do that for some of the other units to try convince myself um i think the bush belt is just such a large feature a lot of its gravity um, there's a deeper signal 